Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video. Today I'm going to be showing how to run an LSDynic keyword file from the APDL product launcher. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my keyword file. I'm going to take this out of a Workbench LSDynic model that I have open here. However, you can get the keyword file from anywhere. You could even write the whole thing yourself in a text editor. But wherever that comes from, you can run that in the APDL product launcher. So I'm going to go to Workbench LSDynic and LSDynic Pre and write solver file. And I'll save that right there. Okay. And now I need to open up the APDL product launcher. So I'm going to go to start and then open the APDL product launcher. And you can see that here. So there's a couple things I need to set. The first thing is you'll need to change the simulation environment to LS Dyna Solver and switch to an ANSYS LS Dyna license or other license that enables LS Dyna. The analysis type is generally going to be a typical LS Dyna analysis. There are a couple other options, so a few different types of restarts and implicit to explicit sequential solution is in there as well. We're just going to be doing a typical analysis today. Then you'll specify the working directory. So I've already done that here, uh, but you can go to browse and pick your working directory and then select your keyword input file, which again, I've already done here, but you can use browse to navigate to that. We've got a couple other tabs here that we'll need to fill out or sometimes need to fill out at least. One is the customization preferences. The main thing you'll want to set here is the memory, which is specified in words, which is a very strange unit. Usually what I'll end up putting in here is 300 million, which corresponds to roughly one or two gigabytes, depending on whether you're using the double precision or not. Speaking of double precision, if you want to enable double precision, that's down here. If you're running SMP, you can set the number of CPUs here. Most of the time, you'll probably want to run MPP, which is going to have the number of CPUs set on the next tab. So this high performance computing setup. So this use distributed computing is generally what you'll want to have checked. That's a little faster for most core counts. The MPI type you can leave to the default. And then if you're running just on one machine, you'll say use local machine only and specify the number of processors right here. So when this number of processors is specified, the number of processors from your customization preferences tab doesn't do anything. And that's what this note down here is saying. So we'll do DMP and use local machine only. And I have my memory size filled in. If you get an error saying there's not enough memory, you can just increase this. LS Dyna will dynamically allocate memory once the solution starts. So this is just the initial value. And once we're ready to go, we'll just hit run. So when you hit run, you'll see a DOS window open up and you'll see the solution progress. As the solution is going, if you copy in a file called D3 kill, you can get an estimate for how much time is left. This is just if you're using distributed and not the SMP solver. So this estimate of the remaining time in the middle, that's from that D3 kill file. And if I open that up, that's just gonna be a file that says D3 kill. That's the file name, no file extension with SW2 on the first line here. And I'll generally save this file on my desktop and then just copy it in. When LS Dyna reads it in, it's gonna delete it after it reads it. So I'll just copy it in and then I still have the files to copy in again later. If you wanna end the simulation and write out a restart point, SW1 is the switch that you want in here. So SW2 just gives you a summary of the current energy and the estimated solution time left. 
So this can be nice if you have a longer solve than my two second solve here and want to know how much time is left. A lot of times the initial time estimate tends to be a little high. And so if you let the solve run for 10 minutes or so, put in this SW2 file, you can get a better estimate of how long the solution is going to take. One thing to note if you're running in distributed here is that you may need to install the MPI. When you're installing ANSYS, that's just this install MPI for ANSYS parallel processing. So you may need to do that if you're going to run in the distributed mode for LS Dyna here from the APDL product launcher. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for tuning in.